Hello, in today's video, we're going to be reviewing all the key announcements from OpenAI's Dev Day, which happened yesterday. And I have to just say that this is probably one of the more exciting releases from OpenAI. I'll say since GPT-4 for me. Um, I know they've released a lot of things and then Sora was good and Sora 2 and what they're doing in that space. Um, but I think this is the most consequential one for builders. If you are someone who's building agents or you're building applications and you want to build within this ec ecosystem, this is something that is way more uh, important. Now, the reason I say this is because OpenAI has been trying to create this app ecosystem and they've been trying to build you know, a significant ecosystem in the space. They've tried with custom GPTs. They've tried all these different approaches to building these app, um, sort of a place where you could connect chat GPT to other applications or do specific things. So the app store for your AI agent or whatever you want to call it. And they weren't quite successful with custom GPTs really didn't hit the mark because it, and I think the reason was because custom GPTs were basically prompts. Essentially, there were system instructions that you could um, essentially, you know, you know, share with people, um, but people, you know, it, it, and it wasn't easy to kind of figure out, like, how is this really different from using just ChatGPT, um, you know, in, in its in this current form? I'm not saying that there wasn't any value, but it just didn't really land or stick with people. All right. So we're going to be looking at all the different areas they touched upon. And I think the most significant one is apps in chat gpt so chat gpt now has a new interface for you to interact with applications so and the key thing to keep in mind here is that they've added this ux piece which allows you to interact with these applications with a different interface so and this is something i've been really excited about for a very long time which is ux generation or ux embedded into chat experiences because there's so much you can do with chat which is great chat is amazing chat is a beautiful interface but sometimes you want that visual sort of interaction you know it's much better to display images when you're returning a search result or returning um you know specific sort of visual cues for you to do something or maybe a form for you to feel might be much more um, user friendly than just chat. And this is what ChatGPT apps is all about. So they've released this and they showed a few examples. We'll walk through one of the examples that they, they showed, which is around booking.com, but they've launched with a number of different, um, applications here. They've launched with Canva, Coursera, Expedia, Figma, Spotify, and Zillow. So they have quite a few applications and they say, um, more applications are coming in. So what this means is that if you are an engineer or builder or a business person who's trying to kind of get set up in this space, now you have an interface to go build on. And over the coming weeks, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can start launching a full business building these apps for ChatGPT. All right. So this is the biggest announcement they released yesterday. We'll talk to touch upon different announcements, but let's just dive in and see exactly what this looks like. So here we're going to say booking.com. I think that's the, the, the fastest way to get it um, initiated. So you can see booking.com has been appended here. So whatever app you want to interact with, you just simply mention the name of the app and it comes out here. So I can say something like, find me the uh, cheapest hotel bookings in New York for the weekend. So very simple uh, request. So the difference you know, between this and say a connector or, you know, a tool call is that previously the tool call would just basically go and call, you know, booking.com, return the response and just show you that response in chat. Now you can see this embedded experience right inside ChatGPT, right? So you can see, you know, the actual hotel returned. You could see that you could actually view this on booking.com and you can see this carousel of all the different options available to you as well. So here, and then below that, you could see the actual chat response, which is telling us, okay, here are the hotels that are actually free, um, or these are the, you know, 
here are actually the budget friendly hotels that we have you know for october 10 to 12. so this the big thing here is really bringing in this interface that is what they did and in the demo they showed it for coursera and a few other ones now let's take one more example let's do spotify uh find me the and I'm just this summer, I'm just gonna add Spotify, Spotify, because we wanna make sure that we have Spotify. So you can see two apps. Now I have both booking.com and Spotify mentioned here. So I can say Spotify, um, create a playlist for my study time. All right, so let's see if it's able to do that. So once again, connecting to app, let's open this up and see. Okay, so this is basically an MCP call to, to Spotify. So you can see, once again, this is returning, you know, a playlist for deep focus and a study playlist. So this is just returning the playlist. So I, I don't have a, a Spotify subscription. I use Apple Music. So it's just telling me that I can only create playlists if I do have Spotify Premium. Now, if you are signing up for the very first time with any of these apps, uh, you would need uh, to um, kind of go through an authentication and stuff like that. Uh, but here you can see right away, I can add these into my own Spotify playlist and so on and so forth. So what has changed is really this new interface and we'll be diving deep into how to build apps like this in the coming videos i want to show you exactly how it works and which is a really good segue into the apps sdk because all the apps you've seen are built on top of this sdk so this sdk just provides you with the tools that you need when you're building out these applications so when you look at the design guidelines because i've been really delving into this since yesterday just sort of deep you know trying to dig deep to understand exactly you know what are the things that they're looking at here and they've set it to sort of talk about exactly how you should think it through now i think the overriding principle for them is that they want it to stay as close as possible to the chat gpt experience they don't want you to stray too far away and that's why they've provided these sort of design guidelines so i think from looking at the design guidelines and looking at what what's possible you have a few components or a few um tools that you could use um you can use like an inline display uh so they're, they're saying like the, these inline di displays um are all, always appear before the generated response so when we saw my earlier example of spotify and booking.com you saw like the actual interface and below that you see your actual response from chat gpt so these are inline responses and they explain exactly what different attributes each inline response has so this one has you know, an icon and a tool so if i kind of zoom in here you could see the icon and the tool they mention inline display so this is sort of this display that you see here so this could be a card it could be a car cell it could just be yeah like this is just one card and this is a car cell this is more like a list um and then you have like a follow-up which is basically the the model response which you see uh right below all right so these are that's, that's just one type you have an inline card so that's just one card uh that you could put in there so this gives you like a lot of opportunities to do some interesting things here now they provide a lot of guidance around making sure that you are not sort of overwhelming the experience because for them they're going for this sort of minimalist uh type design so i think it's something to keep in mind when you start building eventually um, they also have a full screen version of this. Uh, so if I kind of scroll down, they have like a full screen where, okay, maybe I, what I want to fit into the response is not enough. I might sort of give the opportunity to go all full screen. So you see, like, for instance, if you're displaying a map or things of that nature, and they also have one other uh, type, which is the picture and picture. So let's say you're displaying a video or something interactive and you want this sort of over around while you're still having your experience all right so that is it for apps this opens up a lot of opportunities right now you can start building these applications so you can go into the open ai developer program and start building these applications but they mentioned that they're going to be taking submissions sometime down in the year i'm going to go into the more technical details of this looking at the different sdk you know kind of breaking down in on in, in a separate video but for now we're just talking about what you can do so you obviously mcps feature very very hard here because you, they're using mcps for the tool calling aspect of how you build these applications so keep an eye out if you've not been uh, kind of following how mcps work check out my playlist i'm going to drop it in the description as well 
for you to understand how MCPs work because that is very key and essential for anything you're building right now that has to do with agents or agentic solutions. All right, so let's quickly talk about Agent Builder. So this is another release from OpenAI. Um, and so looking at Agent Builder, you can see that you could create a workflow here. And a workflow, as you can see, basically um, has a bunch of nodes. So let's take a look at a few of these nodes. So there's an Agent node. An Agent node basically just represents present um, an agent, right? A quick agent that you're building. So it would be an agent name. There's a bunch of instructions that you want to give the agent. You want to choose a model and then you can grant that agent a bunch of tools, right? So you could give the agent an MCP server. Um, so if you have, you know, sort of MCP server. So if you MCP servers come out of the box with OpenAI, um, these are the ones they've actually built out themselves. There are also a few of these that have been developed by, by other folks. And then you can also add your own MCP server. We'll be walking through a lot of these uh, pieces to just show you how to build some of these um, as well. And they have a, a sticky note, which way you can just basically uh, capture information, you know, just sort of store information about, you know, what's going on with your notes and things like that. So it's standard. Uh, workflow stuff. They also have things like file search. If you're doing like some kind of file search from your vector store. So if you're using like the open AI vector store, you could just pass in your vector store ID right here, or you could create a new vector store. And this allows you to do like rag, um, you know, when a, when a particular question comes in. Now, this is probably the one thing that they've added that a lot of people are not sort of doing in most of the agents that they're building which is really around guardrails, right? So making sure that, you know, you kind of add guardrails to your flow. So when a message comes in, you could do things like check for personal identifiable information. You could do some moderation in here and you can set it up. You could just decide the things that it should flag. This is so powerful when you're building agents, having these sort of guardrails. I think we've talked about MCP servers. So basically connecting to different MCP servers that they have out of the box. So if you want to just call the MCP server directly, that is available. Then you have sort of the control logic type of, type of pieces as well. Um, so I'm just going to delete some of these. We have the control logic right here. So if else, if you were sort of branching from one to another, uh, you have the while loop. So this is for looping. Then, then you have this human in the loop capability where you could add like user approval. So if you want to send something directly to a user, you could send it to a user who has to approve before you continue. And they also have a bunch of sort of data specific stuff for transforming data. So very important, like when you're, you get a piece of data and you're trying to get sort of structured or something specific, a specific schema, these types of things, you use the transform to do that. They also have like an evaluation set so you could evaluate your prompts and app applications as they go through. And I think the cool thing here is that they also have like a preview and all of this can be embedded into your um, into your website uh, using their chat kit integration. Now we'll talk about chat kits because it's the next thing that they've also released, which basically is a UI framework for chat interfaces that you can embed into your application. Now, like I said, they've released a few things that are interesting. We're going to be going deeper into some of these stuff so you can see exactly what what's what's going on. Now, other things that they've released as well, they've released um, the Codex is now generally a very available and they also release Sura 2 as an a for API access. So a lot of interesting things going on with, with these releases. We'll be going deep, deeper and diving into each of these ones in the coming videos so you can see exactly how to use them and you can see how you can start building some of these applications and agents. Until next time, do have a great one. Cheers.